As it has been well established, I am a massive lover of fighting games. And whatever the IP used, as long as the developers can craft together an amazing work of art, I will always love my fighting games. Which brings us to today's topic. Following hot on the heels of the successful first outing and the successful comic book series, here is Injustice 2. A parallel universe where Superman was tricked into killing his wife Lois and their unborn son and subsequently became a dictator and divided the Justice League. With Batman as his main enemy leading a team of insurgents against Superman's evil regime. Superman was ultimately beaten and along with the regime was imprisoned whilst Batman and his insurgents tried to fix the damage that was done. Fast forward a few years and now there is a new threat in the form of Brainiac, the Kryptonian AI that looks to devour planets of their life and knowledge to add to his collection of becoming the supreme ultimate being. Batman reluctantly has to free Superman and the regime and reform the Justice League to take on Brainiac. From the creators of the Mortal Kombat games, the first Injustice game Gods Among Us was crafted and an excellent fighting game was born, with its own unique gameplay mechanics that whilst born from Mortal Kombat, was designed in a way that made it stand out from that series. With standout features like environment interaction, stage transitions, clashes, and character traits and smooth graphics, which were all present in the first game. They have not only crossed over into the sequel, but have been vastly improved and is an even better fighting game. It plays faster, the photorealism on the character animations enhances the look and feel, and on top of that, there are a host of options that can give the game immense replayability. Now have you coming back for more of the action. Now I first came across the Injustice series when I was randomly playing PlayStation at my younger brother's place and this game Injustice just presented itself and I was thinking, what is this? I have never heard of it, to which my brother proceeded to tell me and explain the plot of the comic series and how it's been adapted to this game. I had no recollection of any build up whatsoever or watched any of the ads prior to its release, so I just played it and whilst not immediately hooked. I did enjoy the gameplay and eventually I got a copy of my own and that was yet another fighting game added to my collection. Now the premise of the Injustice storyline sounded very similar to a mini story arc on the animated Justice League show. The episodes of Better Worlds parts 1 and 2 in an alternate universe saw Superman kill Lex Luthor and go on to become a tyrant and the other Justice League members followed him and they soon established a new world order. Batman however secretly aided their good counterparts and succeeded in overthrowing him. In the Injustice storyline there are similarities except it is the Joker who was killed and not Lex Luthor. And of course there is a much deeper exploration of this universe and Superman just continues to fall down the path of darkness. On June 18th 2016 it was announced by NetherRealm Studios and Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment that there would be a sequel to Injustice. They were, in their words, looking to do something unexpected and long term for its sequel, as well as give players a level of control that makes their games a truly personal experience. I just interpreted that as they just wanted to make a much better game than the first. And to their credit, Injustice 2 is a lot better than Part 1. So much so that I rarely play the first Injustice game now since Part 2 came along. Over the course of several months I watched numerous adverts and trailers leading up to its release and I have to say it was like watching trailers for the next big DC movie. Warner and NetherRealm really went out of their way to promote the game and it really did live up to the hype. I have mentioned the gameplay and fighting mechanics that were vastly improved on from the first game but this game also featured a ton of options that gave it more variety and depth. You had your basic one on one with the CPU and human players. The more you play with any of the characters, the more experience points you build which could be used in upgrading your character's abilities and costumes which will make them even stronger and even change up their looks. This brings us to what is known as the gear system which offers character specific costume pieces and equipment with status altering effects and is used to reward players with experience and loot after every match. Given the size of the roster, there is plenty to keep you coming back to enhance each character and add a new costume to their arsenal. There is the campaign mode which basically takes you through the story of the game as you play whilst the cutscenes play out like a movie and make various choices which could lead to different outcomes on how the story will turn out. 
you had a training option which would take you through a step-by-step -step guide on each character's skill and movesets. The multiplayer online feature which could see you play online with friends or other players across the globe as long as you had a good internet connection. This is probably one of the best ways to enjoy the game, playing against others at a similar or higher level and becoming a much better player. There is also the introduction of the new Multiverse Mode which allows players to travel through a series of parallel worlds within the DC Universe and fight against CPU opponents with various handicaps, stipulations and goals. So with all these options on hand, Injustice 2 has way more depth than just a standard one-on-one -on -one fighting game. The roster is also an impressive selection of DC's finest. The roster initially has 28 characters from the start, with an additional 10 via DLC packs, taking the total to 38 or 41 if you count the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as 4. And then a further 10 more who are character palette swaps of existing characters but with their own unique voices and personality. Like Hal Jordan can become Jon Stewart, Supergirl can become Power Girl, and Flash becomes Reverse Flash, and so on and so on. So that takes the console version of the roster to about 51 characters in total. And for the mobile version, there are even more palette swaps, adding even more characters to the game. These are, however, mobile exclusive. But all in all, an impressive roster size with a range of unique and diverse characters adding to the game's depth. My go-tos on the roster are the DC trinity of Superman, Wonder Woman and Batman. Throw in the Arrowverse trinity of Green Arrow, Supergirl and The Flash and you have my personal top 6 most played characters. I mean, you are just simply spot for choice to use that, it's just crazy. I would like to mention the presence of two non-DC brands present here in Mortal Kombat and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes, there have been crossovers in previous games and other entertainment mediums, but to have both in this game just adds to the fun. I was a huge fan of Ninja Turtles tournament fighters and have wanted a sequel for years and years. Now, whilst this is not a sequel in any way, shape or form, it is a great way playing the Turtles in a fighting game again, and against DC's finest, an even bigger bonus. Yes, it is a palette swap of Leonardo as the sole rep for the Ninja Turtles on the selection screen, but they are all different and unique and they feel like their own individual characters. Then having been made by the studios that brought you Mortal Kombat, it is only fitting that they are represented here. Raiden and Sub-Zero do the honours. Both have a nice array of moves and combos and nice looking super moves. Obviously, as this is not Mortal Kombat, the sheer brutality of the moves has been a little bit toned down, but still, nonetheless, very effective. And just for good measure, a palette swap of Raiden sees him become Black Lightning. I just wanted to put that there. And it would be amiss if I didn't mention the stellar voice cast for this game, a who's who in the world of voiceover acting. A few notable names include Kerry Walgreen, Matthew Mercer, Laura Bailey, Steve Bloom, Kari Payton, just to name a few. Now, of course, you had the actors from the Justice League shows reprising their roles here, with Susan Eisenberg as Wonder Woman, Phil Omar's Aquaman, and Green Lantern John Stewart, George Newbern as Superman, and the late great Kevin Conroy as Batman Bruce Wayne. The story mode single campaign is a lot of fun, if only to watch the lengthy cutscenes, which, when added up, goes over to two and a half hours which was around the length of the Avengers Infinity War movie. Its cinematic feel and superb voice acting and in-film action really gives it a feel of a big feature movie. And to be frank, both Injustice Games movie cutscenes were far more entertaining than the Zack Schneider movies. Now I do like Schneider's take on the DC Universe, but it is a very divisive topic as there are those who like him and those who absolutely despise him. But it really does say something if the cutscenes of a video game are much better than a cinematic movie. One thing I will say about Netherrealm is the extra content that they released via DLC. It is a much fairer system than Capcom or Namco. A one-time purchase of the DLC will give you access to all and any characters that were to be added at a later date. Not this individual purchase of separate DLC packs which just came off as an opportunistic way to make more money for the game. Yes, yes, it is a business and companies want to make money, are supposed to need to make money, but this separate DLC purchase tactic just comes off as an unfair way to milk a game for all it's worth. I personally think it's a fair point to make and it is my opinion. 
Now, DLC rants aside, Injustice 2 is a superb follow-up to the first outing and an excellent, excellent fighting game. With several vast improvements and additions, it surpasses its predecessor by miles. I personally prefer it to the Mortal Kombat games. With the success of both Injustice games, could there be room for a third in the series? I believe the comic run which ran for three years produced more than enough content to allow for a third game. There is the crossover with He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, with the events taking place after Injustice 2 in the comics. We did have the Ninja Turtles in the game, so why not bring He-Man into this universe and incorporate it into a game story for the single player campaign? The thought of He-Man vs Superman, or the Joker vs Skeletor, or Teela vs Wonder Woman sounds very intriguing for a fighting game. And as long as the mechanics used in this game plus any new advancements the creative team can think of, it could turn out to be a superb fighting game. That is just me fantasy booking, but what a concept. So that was my look back on an amazing fighting game. It is in my top list of best ever fighters and with all that it has going for it, you simply can't deny that it has made its mark in the fighting game genre. If you were to ask me back in the mid 2000s what would a DC fighting game look like, it would probably look a bit like this. Something out of the X-Men Children of the Atom or Marvel Super Heroes playbook. But I have to say, with what we have with Injustice 2, it is way better than anything I could have imagined. Iconic superheroes and villains, a balanced fighting style, ability to level up your characters, a variety of in-game options and an entertaining movie storyline. Playing against friends or other fighters online worldwide. Injustice 2 is DC's finest fighting game ever made.